Good morning, ladies. <clears throat> so excited to be here with you today. And I would just ask that before we get going, I don't know if you all need this, but I, I need to take a deep breath. Here we are, you've made it. You've got kids in the nursery, you've struggled with traffic, choosing your outfit, whatever it is. <laughs> Let's just come before the Lord and just uh, give him our morning. Our great God and Father, we just praise your holy name. We worship you, you are good, you are great. Thank you for our time together. Lord, you have things to teach us from your word. Would you please open our hearts and our minds to hear them, that we may know you more and love you more and bring glory to you. In Christ's name, amen. <sighs> Feels better already, doesn't it? Well, what a great week we had in our study this week, don't you think? Looking at friendships and where have we been? We had a great opening from Cheryl giving us the overview of the importance of friendships and, and how that's all going to come together and the things that we can learn in that. And, and more importantly, how we learn that Jesus is our, is our best friend, the best friend, and how we are going to just be able to dig into that this year. And then hearing from Pat how everything got started uh, with creation and God whew, breathing life into man and how he is the giver of life. Beautiful, beautiful scriptures that we had. And this, um, this week, we got to, we're going to look a little bit more in depth in the friendships, kind of in the, in the cores, right? In the ripple, in the ripples, as Cheryl puts it in the study, how we go from acquaintance the people that we know in, in large numbers, perhaps, or that you might see frequently um, at the store or even walking in and out of here or wherever it is, how that moves into just a little bit more of community or community circles that we know just a little bit better. Maybe we see people a little bit more consistently and we have uh, maybe a common vision. Also, our companion, now our circles are getting a little bit smaller. These are the people that we do things with. Maybe we go to lunch with, maybe we hang out here and there, or if you happen to have <clears throat> a child in sports, these are the people that you see every week, two and three times a week that you're sitting on the sidelines with all the time. And then here's our core, our core, the people that we call to share our greatest joys. The people that we call when our children make a choice that is not that great, that will affect their life, that will affect our lives, and who we call, as I have done, please still love my child. Please, still think I'm an okay mom. Come alongside me. And what do they do? Your core friends are the ones who wrap you up and remind you of the truth that God loves your child even more than you do. That he was, he's with you, that he will never leave you. These are your core people. How great is our God that he gives us all, each of us to come alongside just the beauty of community. And he encourages us as he lived in that as well and depended on that as well. I, I'm could maybe tell as I've got my stuff up here and everything. <laughs> it might be a little bit how my house looks too. Just, oh, I, where am I gonna put that right there? Yeah, on the ground, that's perfect. Um, what I've loved, what we saw in our lesson this week about our beautiful Lord is that in some of the examples that we had, especially in Matthew of when he was healing the leper or going to raise that child from the dead, or if we went just a little bit further in Matthew, the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years and she saw him and she didn't, she didn't, knew that she was just not even worthy of being near him. And yet she thought, if I could just touch the end of his cloak, hidden, anonymous, here's what I loved. 
is that Jesus turned and he saw her. He saw her. He looked at her. In one of our other verses, it told us that Jesus looked out upon the multitudes and he felt compassion for them because they were lost like a sheep without, with the sheep without a shepherd. Here's what I love about our great God. Jesus sees. Jesus sees whether we're at the acquaintance or we're on into the companion or the core. He sees. And what I love about that is that he didn't just see their physical need. He saw their spiritual need. And it just made me think that Jesus is the one Just like binoculars, they bring out, and I could see your names from here. It brings you close. I won't look at the front row because you might not want me to see all the details of that, but (laughs) Jesus sees. No matter which group of, of friends that we are with, My prayer is that we will be like Christ. Lord, help us to see not just what's going on right there at that moment, but help us to see what might be the need that through you, you might be using me to meet. It might be an acquaintance and and that, that gal might just need you to come alongside her and just give her a little hug. Or even this, Just give her an acknowledgement. I see you. Hello. What I wanted to get into this week, um, just a little bit as we kind of go over uh, these different circles, I wanted to look, of course, my favorite place to look is to Jesus and to see in God's word that how, how he gives us such a beautiful picture. He gives us truth. And what we can learn from that, what we can learn from the Lord, because what I love about, um, about these circles, one of the things is uh, the surprise that can come from when someone moves to an acquaintance to maybe a core person. And sometimes I remember when my girls were in high school. I have four children. I have two girls and two boys. Um, Markel and Katrina are my girls, and they are right now uh, 27 and 24. Oh, can't even believe that. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like, I'm like, who is that? Um, and my boys, Cole and Cade, are 21 and 19, and I remember when my girls, now we're all girls here, so we all know the drama of relationships, do we not? Oh my gosh, they're my best friend, I just love them so much, oh I can't stand her, I can't even believe what she said, on and on and on, and how all this goes, and I just remember, well, two things come to my mind, first I think, when will I outgrow that? And second, I just remember telling them, relax, open your hands. It's this ebb and flow of relationships. It's the ebb and flow, it's the tide, the in and out, where you have those times when you are so close and you're building into each other. And then there's sometimes those times where you drift apart, right? And if we cannot panic in the drift, because here, I told them, maybe your friends are gaining some new insights, and this is a chance for you to grow and and learn and, and, and get deep in some other areas so that when you come back together, you have new things to share, new ways to build each other up. It's that ebb and flow of friendships. So although we are looking at them in ripples effect, and, and I don't want us to get so, so 
bound up into this person. I've got to put you in a ripple. I've got to do it. Which one are you? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go with the ebb and flow and see where these ripples end up, where, these, where, then they, where they might intersect. Because one of those acquaintances in the next season of life could be your core. We don't know. So I love, so let's just remember to keep our eyes open and to see each other and pray to the Lord because that's the only way we're going to, to see that. We will not ever have the ability to see the heart like Christ does, truly. But ask the Lord to give us eyes to see what might be behind the facade that we are seeing here or what we're seeing on the outside. So important as we're dealing with friendships. So let's look at Jesus. Now, as you look at your notes page there, um, I don't want you to panic because you are seeing your notes page with um, full chapters on them. <laughs> I, it made me giggle when I thought that you all would have that. And um, we're not going to do the full chapters. But this is what we are going to, this is the overview that I wanted to see about our great God, is Jesus, how, how is Jesus a friend? Now I'm setting up in chapter 13, here's where we're going with this. This is what you need to know about what's happening right now in chapters 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. They're all, it's all the same time frame. And what's happening here is that this is right before Jesus is going to go to the cross. Right before. So he's having the Last Supper, which is a, a beautiful, it's a holiday meal for, for the Jewish people, the Passover. And they're celebrating. Many, some of you have made the Ten Commandments, Exodus, where the Israelites were, were moved out from Egypt, Right? God saved them. But before that, that night, he gave them very specific instructions. And one of them was that they had to find a spotless lamb. Sacrifice that lamb. Take the blood of the lamb, put it on the doorposts of their home. And then the angel of death would pass over them and they would be saved saved by the provision that God had given with the blood of the lamb over the doorpost of their home. So this is what they're celebrating. Fast forward to the New Testament, to our Jesus Christ. Some of you may remember, he is called the Lamb of God. He's our sacrifice. His blood cleanses our hearts, covers us so that when God sees us, he sees our Savior and his sacrifice for us and he passes over us in the sense that we are saved from his wrath. That's our Christ. And he is risen from the dead, and he is alive today. This is Jesus. This is who we're talking about. That is what they are celebrating at this moment, although the disciples don't quite know that. We have that insight right now today. But they know that they're celebrating this with their Lord. And Jesus knows that he is going to the cross. And so the things that I would encourage you, these chapters, 13 through 17, these are Jesus' his last words. These are the things that, that it build up in his heart that he wants them to know, that he wants to say to them. Have you ever had some friends leave? Have any of you had your kids leave to college? Or maybe the kindergarten? Someone very dear to you? And there's some things you want to say, aren't there? 
bless those college students' hearts because, wow, the list that they get. But there's things that you want to say. This is Jesus. And these are the things that he wants to say. How exciting that we get to see this, that we get to see the heart of our Lord for his dearest friends. So let's look and see what he has to say. Now, of course, I'm just choosing a few verses here. The first thing um, that I love that he does is that he, he serves them. He washes their feet. He washes their feet. This is only the, a servant's job, the very lowliest, washes their feet. But this is what our Lord, God, does. He's down on his knees washing their feet. Why? Why? Part of it that I love is that he sees. He knows what they're going to need. These whole chapters are that. He knows what they're going to need. And he wants them to see that they are to serve each other. That they are to serve each other. For I gave you an example in chapter 13. I gave you an example that you also should do as I do to you. Verse 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. One of the big things that he wants them to know, love each other. Serve each other. One of his very big things of his heart that he wants to impart. How important is that for us to hear? Serve each other. And my question is, for you is, what motivates us to serve? those in our spheres. When we are so filled up with the love of God, how do we get that? Where does that come from? That comes from knowing him. That comes from studying his word. That comes from seeing his example of how much he loves you. How much he loves you. And then that overflows from us to others. May that be where we get our vision of service for those in our spheres, whether it's looking at someone and acknowledging and saying hello or coming alongside or whether it's answering that phone and spilling out words of truth and encouragement. The diapers that we change, the meals that we make, Sometimes serving is messy and difficult. I think not sometimes, come on, all the time. But when love is our guide, when love is what is our motivator, when we want to do it for the Lord, because that's what he has done for us, changes everything. I pray that we bring this into our, into our spheres Jesus comforts his friends. How much do I love this? Because he sees, because he sees as he is talking to them and as he is telling them. He, he just told them at the end of 13 that where I am going, you cannot follow. And so in 14, he tells them, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And he encourages them with um, verses 2 and 3. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And he tells them the way that he that they can be there. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So he's laying it all out for them. And he still knows that their hearts are troubled. 
And he sees. He sees that they, they will need words of encouragement. What can they hold on to? And here's the part that I love. Did you catch that in verse 14? Let your heart not be troubled. So how is that going to happen? Believe in God. Believe also in me. How is our heart not troubled? We're believing in God. We're believing in who Christ is, that he came from the Father, that he is the Son of God, that he is the living God. We're believing in that. And that reverts back, let not your heart be troubled. This is how. He doesn't just leave them alone with nothing. Good luck. He gives it to them. And if you read these chapters, he says it over and over again. Believe in me. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The Father is in me, and I am in him. This is your stronghold, friends. This is our stronghold for life, for relationship, for friendship. It's our great God, Jesus Christ. How good is he to comfort his friends? Out of which truth do we bring comfort to those in our spheres? Is it our own truth that we try to use? Fun sayings or, oh, I heard this or I heard that. Sometimes those are very encouraging and entertaining and very, and a very applicable. But my prayer is that I would bring comfort, the comfort that brings steadfastness and surety and helps the heart not to be troubled. And that's based in our great God and who he is. May we, bring, may, we, may we seek comfort from the Lord, that comfort from him for ourselves, and may that be what we extend to our spheres, the people that he has given us to come in contact with. Oh, I forgot to put this part in. How could I? So glad that I just go right back here to the word of God because he not only just left them with that, but he promises, here's part of his great comfort that he is giving, is that the Holy Spirit, I will ask the Father in verse 16 of chapter 14, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth. And it says later that that. Um, like we sung about this morning or that Candy read this morning, that, that the Spirit, he will bring things to your mind. He will bring you comfort. He will remind you of the things that I have taught you. God's giving his very Spirit to live within us, to remind us that we are not alone, to bring back the truth of what Jesus said don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. Believe in what I have said. Let that be the foundation, the very root of your life. He doesn't just leave us alone, friends. He saw and knew what the need would be. And he provides over and over. God provided for the Israelites, for Egypt. He provides Jesus Christ for the way of our salvation to be in relationship with him. He provides the spirit, his own spirit, to live in us, to encourage us, to remind us, to seek our roots deep into that we may be steadfast and strong, that our hearts may not be troubled. How good is he? How good is he? Jesus goes on because he knows that there will be more. He goes on to instruct and warn his friends. 
These are his dearest, dearest, remember. This is before he's going to the cross. This is with his passion. This is his heart. And this is what he is telling them. And we get to see and we get to hear and learn from this truth. Something Jesus wants them to know. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me, who lives in me, who makes his home in me, that's what that word abide means. Make our home in. And I in him, he bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. He's instructing them. He's warning them. He's telling them the way. This is how you live, friends. I love 1511 too. Part of that is he's all going in there. Um, all of his instruction about abiding in me and about how God loved me and I love you and God loves you. And that he, he just says that over and over. I cannot even tell you how important that is that he wants to stress to his friends. And he says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. He wants his joy, the joy that he is re in relationship with God the Father. That joy. He wants that joy that's in him to be in them. To be in us. That it may be made full. And when we cling to that, and go to that, that's our go-to, ladies. That's our joy that no one could take. The intangible, the imperishable. No one can take that from us. No matter which circumstances come in our life, the fact remains that if you are Christ's, your soul is safe in him. Circumstances cannot take that away. You are sealed. You are his. Christ is in you. The spirit of the living God is with you. That joy, no one can take that. Let us remind each other of that. Let us remind and, and bring that to each other's mind. 1633, he tells them, These things I have spoken to you, that in me, do you hear that? Circle that. If you've got your Bibles open, I hope you do. Make the note. Circle this verse right there. These things I have spoken to you. Jesus is telling them, I'm saying this to you, that in me, in me, Jesus, you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. He's not sugarcoating anything. He's letting them know, in the world, you have tribulation. But take courage. Take courage. Why? Why would we take courage? And in what? He says, I have overcome the world. It all goes back to Jesus, ladies. Always. That is our peace, that is our courage, and that is what he wants to instruct and warn his apostles with. Things are coming. Take courage. In me, you will have peace. And then I, I just love the part, chapter 17. So now this... The other verses, he's talking, just like we're talking now. And he's, he's telling his disciples these things. And now in verse 17, it says, These things Jesus spoke. And lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come to glorify thy Son, that the Son may glorify thee. And he begins to pray. He's talking to his friends. He's encouraging them. He is teaching them how to serve and to comfort. And he's instructing them and warning them. And now it is closer. 
And so where does he go? He goes to the Father. And he begins to pray for his closest and his most dearest. His words are so beautiful, what he prays. He wants them to know. He wants them to know. And he tells them, and this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life. God, let them know me. Let them know you. He's praying for their souls, for their strength. Verse 11, and he's talking to God, the, on, the one who, who will do all things. I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep them in, thou na- in thy name, the name which thou hast given me, that they may be one, even, even as we are one. While I was with them, I was keeping them in thy name, which thou hast given me, and I guarded them. He guarded them in the word of God. He guarded them in in who God is. And he's praying that for them, that that will continue to be. He says, sanctify them in truth. Thy word is truth. Highlight that one, ladies. Sanctify them. That means keep them apart. Keep them holy. Keep them apart from the world in truth. Your word is truth. Ladies, do we want to be set apart for God? Do, you, do we want to be strong in who he is? We need to be with the truth, and the truth is his word. My challenge to you, to me, stay in it. Read it. Cling to it. It teaches us about our God. It opens up our hearts and our minds to who he is. And as we get to know him more, we love him more. How could we not? Stay in it. Read it. Listen to it. That's one of my, as, as I am not perfect in this every day. How, how sad is that? But I have found, I do have to say, that sometimes that Bible app just saves me. Because while I'm getting ready in the morning, I could put it on and, and listen to God's word over and over. I could do it in the car. Get the word, the truth in your mind, in your heart that it may set you apart for him and to him. Verse 26, the end of his prayer. The love that thou didst love me, may that love be in them and I in them. So before he goes, Lord, May your love, the love that's in me, your love that's in me, may it be in them. Just as I am in them. His spirit wants us to be sure in the love of God, friends. He is so good. So my question for you, do you know him? Do you know this God, our God, the great God? May I tell you this, friends? He sees you. He sees you. He sees your heart. He sees the very thing that you might want to keep from him. He sees it. And he knows your name. And he loves you so. He loves you. He wants to come in and to heal your wound and to bind it and to bind you to himself. He's prayed for you and for me. Did you know that? Did you know that? 
He says, I do not ask in behalf of these alone, which is his core, but for those who would also believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. That they may be in us. He prayed for you. He loves you. He knows your name. I pray this week that as we go out, ladies, in whatever sphere it is, that you will know that he loves you, that you and I will be so overwhelmed by his love that it will flow out of us and it will touch those that he brings into contact with us, that he brings into our circles. And may he be glorified. And may many come to know his great love. And I pray that it starts with you. Speak to a leader. Speak to someone. If you, if you need to know how much Christ loves you, that's his prayer. That's his heart for his friends. It's his heart for you and me. May we walk in it this week. Be firm in it this week and give that to others this week. Have a great morning.